Okay, sorry. Um, we're having storms right now and my power surge and my router had to reboot, so. <laughs> so great timing. Um, anyways, he's about to call me back. But we're planning on doing uh, morning, Saturday mornings, uh, Central Daylight Savings Time, um, Dallas time, um, either 10 or 11, and I'll clarify that with him. Okay. Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from Securus Tech. Let me know if that's too loud. I'm inmate at Spring Creek Correctional Center. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept charges, press one to refuse charge thank you for using securus you may start the conversation now hello hi brother what's up can you hear me yeah i can hear you okay we are live now um hopefully the hopefully the power will stay on and not surge again but it's still thunderstorming out there so hopefully um crazy tech crazy texas weather for real, for real, for real. So we have 15 people watching so far. Uh, so we want to talk about, Jason actually specifically wants to um, discuss some things, uh, not necessarily about himself this time and his story, but um, Jason, do you wanna take the floor a little bit? Yeah, let me, yeah. Yeah, let me just first say I wanted to say thanks uh, from the bottom of my heart for everybody. Uh, my sister's given me a whole bunch of really positive feedback and really nice messages and things from the outside world, and uh, I really needed that because this is a dark place that, that I live in right now, and uh, those messages really meant a lot to me, so uh, I wanted to say thanks first. I really appreciate um, everybody's kind words and books and everybody that contributed um, to our little legal defense fund, I really appreciate you. That was very kind. Yeah. Um, and it's also, yeah, for sure. And I wanted to mention, too, that it's important for everybody to realize that if you are a survivor or a person um, that has dealt with child abuse, uh, sexual assaults, or physical abuse in your lifetime, that we sort of constitute a very strange um, and unique family of sorts. The sad part about this particular type of abuse is that part of this tree um, that has very long roots is that we all end up isolated and lost in our own world and separated from our families and support systems and things like that. So it's probably the time in life for this particular issue uh, to come to the forefront for people to be concerned about it because um, Child abuse is ancient. It's very, very old. And the people that participate in it and the people that prey on kids are well-organized, they're well-funded, they're well-connected, and they've been doing it for a really long time. And proof of that or evidence of that is in the disparity of prison sentences that you see between people that molest kids and people that beat up child molesters. Um, just the rate at which they let sex offenders out of prison is ridiculous. So I just appreciate that the family has come out of the woods to support my experience. It just means a lot. And I think it's important for people to remember that uh, if you ride for me, I ride for you. Believe that. And we all have to stick together. It's super important for people to stick up for kids when they have the chance, when they have the opportunity. It's a very important thing to do because most of us just get forgotten about and passed, brushed aside. Mm -hmm. And that's not cool. That that doesn't work out very well at all for anybody. Agreed. And just so you know, there's I've been a, a ton of people who have reached out um, and private messaged me uh, and told me about their experiences. And I mean, it's a, a massive amount of people out there who have experienced this, and it's just mind blowing to me. Like, I didn't experience this. I, I wasn't, you know molested as a kid or anything like that and so the 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 amount of people that are coming forward right now is just it blows my mind i don't i can't even fathom so i can't yeah and i can't understand why 
this particular issue of people preying on kids has been taboo or not spoken of or not properly addressed. It seems like our society, we're still focused on um, this skin color has been picked on or that skin color has been picked on or this nationality or that nationality, which is valid and legitimate. But the entire time, kids have been preyed on, irregardless of skin color or nationality. That's been happening the entire way. Uh, but what I also know from my personal experience is change never happens from the top down. It always happens from the bottom up. And the person that you're, you're listening to right now is absolutely at the very bottom of this entire situation. I'm the type of guy that would go and smash out somebody who was molesting a kid or on their way to molest a kid. That's literally what I'm serving time for. And while I don't think everyone should go out and do that, I do think every child molester should not sleep easy at night wondering if someone is going to come um, because that's the only thing that deters that sort of mindset from preying on kids. So it's a really important thing to recognize that all change happens from the bottom up. And this is the absolute bottom right here. That's what, that's what you're listening to right now. It's the bottom, I promise you. Yeah. I know. There, there's, uh, there's a lot, a lot going on in the world right now. And, man, the kids, it breaks my heart. So I think that we all need to pull together and you know, try to make a change. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. And the thing is, if this extraordinary and bizarre family does not come together at times when it matters and pull for each other, then we just continue to be separated. And that was my experience in life is once my own family, in air quotes, betrayed my trust and violated my trust as a child, I was completely disconnected from the regular world from that moment all the way forward. There was zero chance for me to have a regular life or experience things like other people did from that moment forward. And what's shocking is there's tens of thousands of other youngsters exactly like me who are going to turn out very similar to me. No job, no family, broken, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, if we don't start making active changes in this sort of thing. And one of the things you we need to do is when somebody's caught up or somebody needs help, then the group needs to show up and help out. It's a really important thing. That's how you heal people's hearts and that's how you change stuff in society. So then there's I, I'm pretty There's been a lot and I don't know if you see you is your um I'm getting another call. Um you are, you know, in there and you don't get to see um, you know, you don't are not up to date, but there there has been a lot a lot of like child pedophile ring busts recently. So everything that is going on right, right now, everything that everybody's doing, it is making a difference. Um, so we just need to keep pushing um, to try to, you know, to try I'm, to. Yeah, I'm glad to see or hear about progress on those fronts. But again, what I know from my life experience, especially in the climate that I live in, is some of these old power structures that are well connected, they've been having their way or doing what they want with children or looking the other way at people that do for so many years that it's a really difficult thing uh, to wrest that sort of thing from their hands. And so. In my path, in my experience, I stood in the same courtroom that was handing the person that molested me zero prison time and got 23 years for assaulting pedophiles. And that's just so shocking and so glaring that it almost leaves me speechless. Um, and it's not because I feel sorry for myself, it's because I just wonder, how could these people in their right mind continue to let people that prey on kids out while they lock people up that prey on child molesters? That's just mind blown you know what i mean yeah. mind blown so but that's that's our reality right now that's where we live in and that's why it's so important for people to pay attention and listen if a child is telling you something listen like when i was a kid and i tried to tell the people in authority around me what was going on in my house it was a church environment and the church people drug us in and told us we needed to forgive 
uh, our dad who was molesting us and beating us because he had repented and we were going to keep it in the family and everybody be quiet and send us all back home together again. Um, and that sort of thing is not, I mean, that's no way to address a child who's had their life destroyed. Absolutely not. Hopefully, yeah, some of this will stir up some heat and some interest because I promise you, if we're worried about uh, lives in general, we should be very concerned about our children's lives and how they turn out. Because let me tell you, when you come from a house like that and you live a life like I'm living now, you've just been robbed of everything. And I don't want to see that happen to any other child. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, I mean, this might be not, not the right thing to say, but these not only are our kids, but they're going to grow up to run the world, you know, and we're, all of these child molesters are messing their minds up, like, we, we can't be doing this, like, I just... Well, and that's the, that's the biggest long-term cost that everyone is going to have to deal with, and it happened to me. My entire moral code and all of the decisions I made in my life um, everything was skewed from the get-go because you have to imagine if you're a young child and your brain and your body are forming and someone is beating you like a farm animal or molesting you it, it forces change on you that you're not even aware of until later on in life so throughout the course of my life I like to think of myself as a good person I'm a decent person I'm a kind-hearted person and yet, a lot of the choices I made along the way demonstrated that clearly I had zero self-worth, zero concern for the future. Uh, my life had already been removed from my hands. And if you multiply that by thousands of kids, this is happening all the time in a lot of different places in this country, you're, you're going to have another generation and another generation and another generation of people that never had a had a proper opportunity at a start from the get-go and that should be scary and it's not even just this country it's all over the world all over the world that's all, exactly right all over the world that's exactly right that's exactly right and i mean for me personally what is what should be is every child predator out there should wonder every single day when one of us is going to rise up and come looking for them uh, to get revenge or just to put some balm on the wound. Um, I want all of them to live nervous and in fear that that's going to happen because I promise you, all of us together are much bigger and much stronger than the group that preys on kids. I assure you of that. There just hasn't been any network um, or any central place to bring survivors of this together to change sentencing laws, to change how they're tracked and monitored. Those are all things that should be happening worldwide. Like I assure you, once you've demonstrated sexual interest in a child once, you should be monitored for the rest of your life. There's no changing that spirit in a person. They need monitoring for the rest of their lives, period, or incarceration. That sort of thing cannot just be reckoned out of a person. And I'm amazed that it's 2020 and they continue to let these people out of prison at a rate faster than thieves or burglars. They're letting child molesters out much sooner and much quicker than thieves and burglars, which again demonstrates people are concerned with their property and their property values, but they're not concerned with their children. And that should be just absolutely uh, sobering for everybody involved in this issue. I 100% agree, um, and I think that a lot of, uh, what were you saying the other day when we were talking about um, why they gave you such a hard sentence is because you were out here doing the job that they didn't do? Yeah, the justice system takes offense at anything that is deemed vigilanteism. And they take very strong offense at anyone who basically is arrested and in their court and you're arrested for taking the law into your own hands. They take extreme offense at that. And what was interesting about that situation for me is, of all people in the state of Alaska, I could probably stand one there left. on my square and, and demonstrate that I took great offense 
that they let the people that molested me out with no prison time at all and yet wanted to punish me with more prison time. Um, but it, 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 it's an affront to the system if we rise up and take power in our own hands. They don't like it. But as you can see in other aspects of social change, it works. When we group together and make changes, it's effective. It works. We're bigger than the systems that govern us. All of us together, we're bigger. That's yep. the bottom line. They can't ignore, I mean, they can't ignore us forever. You know, if we all keep keep working together, I mean, they're going to have to address it at some point. So Funny thing, funny thing about the truth is no one can deny it. When it's the actual truth, no one can deny it. Um, and this is a truth that is... Thank you for point. using Securus. Goodbye. I'll be back. God, sorry about that, you guys. I think that was a... Okay, let me see. Yes, thank you all for donating. Oh my gosh, the amount of... Man, the, the change... Hold on, let me go to the change.org petitions. We're over 2,000 right now. Um, and I'm going to get them merged. I know I said I was going to do that this morning. Uh, I just need to make sure that basically the verbiage on each one are identical. And then once I do that, I can I can send it to change.org and have them merge them. Uh, and so the, the, you know, everybody's donations, everybody shares. Like, I can't even keep up with all of that stuff. Um, my kids are acting crazy. Do you guys hear that? <laughs> um... Okay, Let's see, California allows it. I saw somebody else. Yes, Victoria, he does have so much kindness and love in his heart. Um, he's he's so sweet. He he calls and he talks to my kids. Um, they love him. He sends them their own little letters and draws them pictures, and they write him back and draw him pictures. Um, they'll sit and talk on the phone with him forever, if they could. I don't know why he's not calling back right away. Um, Washington, they protect them. Hate crime? Are you serious? In Washington, that's insane. It's a hate crime? Of course it's a hate crime. We hate them. Okay, let's see. Yeah, and so you guys, like, if you guys can just share, just share as much as possible, that is really going to, really going to help get his story out there. Um, Hello, this is I a prepaid collect call. I think that, as, you know, we need to get his story out there to the people, to the people who can make a change. We need to get their eyes. At some point, you know, they're not going to be able to ignore it. So, and not just his story. Sophie, everybody. The kids. Are you still there? Yep. We're back. We're all, we're still live. Okay, Ty. So, I mean, the other thing that's important to mention, too, for people is, for myself, I was judged pretty harshly, and everybody reacted uh, in shock and horror that somebody would dare go track guys like this down and beat them up. And had you been in my shoes, uh, I was systematically beaten with two by fours, not once, not twice, not ten times, a hundred times over my childhood. I was beaten with belts 50 times in my childhood. This guy didn't come in and molest me one time. It was 20 times. So I can't understand. I just couldn't relate to their outrage because in my mind, there is an ocean of kids similar to me that have grown up and matured. And the thing that is sick and twisted about this type of abuse is it makes you feel like you have to cover it up or be ashamed or you can't lash out at people that attack kids similar to what happened to me. 
and I can also tell you, as politically incorrect as this may sound, there has never been an occasion or an event in my life that was more cathartic or pushed me faster to healing in my heart than when I got my hands on one of these pieces of shit and beat them up, truly. And again, I know that sounds politically incorrect, but to have stuffed that and not been able to relate it to anyone and to have been told it wasn't that bad or it, you should just forgive him my entire life, to reach a place where it was appropriate and it was the time to demonstrate some righteous anger and handle the business was one of the most cathartic experiences of my life. And granted, it was a life-changing decision for me and I'm paying for it now. Um, but it was amazing as far as what it did for my heart. It was liberating and it was amazing. Um, and it was really just, I don't know any other way to describe it. And I'm not a violent person. I'm not an angry person. It took a lot of energy on my part to generate that sort of emotion. But when it occurred, it was amazing. Well, hold on here. Sorry, I've got a lot. We've got 99 people watching right now, by the way. So, hi. Hi, all you new people. Thanks for watching. Hello. Appreciate you. Um, I've got dogs trying to get in here. If anybody has any questions, um, something else I wanted to say, too, is that I also recall being a young man standing in the courtroom while the stepdad that molested me was being sentenced. And these people ask me all kinds of crazy, invasive questions to be asking um, a 10 or 11 year old child. And no one appeared in that courtroom to stand by my side or go against this sort of behavior on my behalf. And then imagine how surreal it was, fast forward 25 or 30 years, and I stood in a courtroom, and again, maybe one or two people standing by my side, and I had to watch a pedophile watch in and cry to the judge about how he can't sleep at night. I gave him a permanent injury. His life is, he sleeps in fear now, checks his doors four times a night and how awful it was. And to stand in a courtroom with these pedophiles while they cry to the judge about how horrible their life is now. Again, I'm not a mean spirited or a hateful person, mm -hmm. uh, but I wouldn't be being honest if I didn't tell you there was such a deep sense of satisfaction because I thought to myself, you know what? It's about time you people understood what it's like to sleep in fear and go check your bedroom door and see if it's locked. I remember my dad used to yell at me, stepdad, for locking my door because I did it on purpose because I didn't want him to creep in in the nighttime. So to be an adult and stand there and listen to these people talk about how scared they were to sleep at night, etc., gave me a great deal of satisfaction. Um, and that's kind of a scary thought, because I'm not a violent or mean-spirited person, but I thought to myself in that moment, you know what? I wish all of them were scared in the night, and I wish all of these pedophiles checked their locks constantly. Um, maybe they would think twice before they go out and do what they do. Absolutely. And I think now, with this whole everything, hashtag save our children, how we're all bringing light to the situation we're all banding together that i think that they are currently they they're starting to check their locks every freaking night i hope so anyways um i hope so i, I think i hope so i think I mean, it's, we're making a yeah, change it's, already you sorry. know brother yeah it's important to mention you know as a young man the house that i lived in i remember being a child and just not even wanting to go to sleep at night because I knew what was going to come or not even wanting to be in the house and I had nowhere else to go. And I promise you, being raised in a church and spiritual environment, my prayers or my hopes or my dreams would have been answered if some tattooed up badass would have kicked the front door in and beat the shit out of the person that was abusing me. I would have had some hope in life and I would have believed in God or other things again. And that never happened. I was around an ocean of people all the time in church. These people had groups and meetings, and the church was aware of what this person had been recently convicted of, and no one ever asked me as a child, are you all right? Are you okay? Do you need some help? There was no mention whatsoever. And I didn't realize until much later on in life how egregious 
and how terrible that is. Like, if you have an adult male friend who's been recently convicted of molesting his own children, slap the shit out of that guy. He needs to be super hard checked. And I'm not saying people should be, you know, sacrifice their freedom and give everything up. However, these people need to know that they're accountable in their community, mm -hmm. in their friendship circles, in the churches they go to. You cannot let people that behave this way towards children just continue to live their lives as normal. And that's exactly what I experienced as a child, and I'm certain that's what many children are experiencing now. And it's just a sick and sad reality. Um, and I'm not much of a woe is me person, and you know, I don't, I'm not a whiner, I don't complain. I'm dealt with the hand I've been given in this life, however, you just have to realize for a kid that was beaten and molested to grow up and beat up some molesters to then be levied two and a half decades in prison for doing that, think of how disgusting and how sad that is. That is absolutely disgusting. That means the court and the judge chose to not operate with any reason any civility, any sort of merciful look at what was actually going on. The state of Alaska was stuck on, nobody comes in this court and meets out the law to anybody other than us. Yep. So, I just, I want people to really be aware. Imagine a court that did that. It's mind-blowing. If anything, you could have sentenced me to, I don't know what, some sort of PTSD counseling. Exactly. Help you out. For God's sake, they already messed you. They screwed you up when you were a child by not doing what they should have done. And they are the ones who made you this way. And then, you know what I'm saying? They're the ones who caused this to happen by not doing their job. 100%. Doing their job back when you were 13 100%. years old. Like, are you kidding me? Your fault. And you're going to put him in jail for 23 right. years? Like... No. Oh, and by the way, we're up to like 150 right. viewers right now. But on, which is something else for the group mind to consider is, again, how is it 2020? And again, I'll relate my experience as a child. Uh, after my brother ran away from home and turned him in for molesting us, I was too scared to tell anyone. This guy gets a prison sentence suspended, no prison time at all. And they, the state doesn't even come in and ask if the children are all right. Do they need counseling? Should we do follow-ups with this family? Should we check on these kids and make sure the abuse didn't continue? They returned this guy to the home with zero follow-ups. Imagine how treacherous and how terrible that is. You do not send the fox back to the hen house after slapping him on the wrist. That's no kind of assistance. So, and didn't they from my perspective... Didn't they um, pack you guys up and move off and start homeschool then? Like, you guys went to public school at the time or not? So we, at the time this all occurred, they were connected to a Christian church in the biggest city in, in Alaska, which is Anchorage. After his conviction and after the church became aware, they basically moved the family out 40 miles away to a very, very small town where they took us to another church which was connected to the main church and we were then even further isolated from all of our friends, anyone we knew, um, and the abuse continued. And at that point, when I was about 15 years old, I literally climbed out the window, ran away from home, and never went back. And I mean, in my life, I've worked very hard. I've worked 60-hour weeks, blue collar, all over this country. Um, and have never been a freeloader or a slacker or a complainer or anything of the sort. And it wasn't until I returned back to Anchorage after being gone for 10 years that I realized the depth of the problem. There is rampant child abuse and molestation happening all the time. And what the courts have demonstrated is if you dare to put your hands on people that molest kids, we're locking you up for a very long time. It's insanity. Absolute I don't get it. I don't get it. And I think, honestly, uh, I think that your harsh, harsh sentence, I think a lot of it did have to do with your previous, your history, you know what I'm saying? Your record that already, right? Do you I'm agree? Certain, I'm certain that, I'm certain that some, uh, a sentence is, is 
decided upon based on like four or five different components. So if we're saying, did I have a criminal history? Absolutely, for sure. Um, I've stated pretty upfront and clearly to anybody, and this is another thing society has to deal with. Again, when you've had reality beaten or molested out of you as a child, of course I grew up to break the law. Of course I, I didn't feel comfortable or safe anywhere. Um, and I stole from people as if my life didn't make any difference at all. It didn't matter. And yep. that's what was ground into me as a child. So, And instead of them helping you, they, they right. you know, they, they locked right. you up. I just don't. I just and don't, we, it doesn't make any sense to me at we all. We did, right, we did a fairly reasonable job. And mind you, I had a uh, $2,200 attorney that went to my sentencing with me. And I know $2,200 is not a small amount of money, but in the attorney and legal world, that's a very small amount of money. He basically represented me gratis. And we did a fairly reasonable job of demonstrating to the court um, at some point when I was released um, from jail a prior time, I had received a PTSD diagnosis. Those were all things that could have been addressed that we could have discussed with the court. And none of those things were considered in any way, shape, or form. They just, they pretty much figured, absolutely not. This guy, they, they literally said that I was a, a terror to the community because I was preying on these innocent and law-abiding pedophiles. <laughs> that were just in their home. And and what I find shocking about that is, if you are a felon, which all of these people were felons, had prior convictions, and they were active in the community, that's how I came across them, you can take a felon and you can give him a UA to see if he's on drugs. You can review camera footage to see if he's running around town burglarizing home. But there is no test for a pedophile still committing pedophile acts in the community. So all they have to do is show up in parole once a month and say, absolutely not, I haven't pursued any children lately, and they get to go home for another month. So for the court to arbitrarily decide that because they hadn't caught these people again, and because as with most children, exactly. this sort of behavior is very rare, um, these were just law-abiding pedophiles that I so viciously preyed upon. They had made they a mistake that. previously, and they're not doing it again. You know, like, just, I can't. Exactly. You have one minute left. Anyway, so I got a, this prison phone situation, I got to get off the telephone, but I appreciate each and every one of you, and thanks for everybody's time. We and, have, uh, we got up to like 160 viewers, and a whole bunch of people are relating, and you're a hero, you need to be let out, um, they're not going to stop until you're free. All of that. I've gotten so many Thanks. comments, I haven't been able to even... I've been reading them Thanks, a little guys. bit as you talk, but I've been trying to pay attention to you. But I love I you. I really appreciate it. Are you going to call me tomorrow? What time? Or later? Uh, you tell me. The usual. Morning time. Morning time or later. Just do the usual, 10.30. What time are we doing Saturdays? Is it 10 okay. or 11 my time? 10, 10.30. 10.30 my time. Okay. All right. Okay. Love you. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. You did great. I love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for using Secure. Anyways, um, yeah. So, uh, I, th I thought I saw somebody asking about his mom, and I don't really know how to answer that. Um, and I talked about this on the last live. I, I don't I don't really know. And honestly, I don't even know. Our dad, Gary, was out of the picture for so long. I don't know if he ever even knew that it was going on or, or if anybody told him and he just didn't care. I know obviously he had to know at some point at now, like he knows that Jason has done all of these things. I know that. Um, but I, I just don't know how to speak for those two on why they didn't do anything or care about it. So, um, all you guys. Yeah, so I, I'm super, super thankful for everybody tuning in, for everybody sharing and, um, you know, 
signing the petitions and all of that, you guys, you know, don donating the money for his attorney. I think we're at over two grand right now. I haven't checked it um, in a little while, but um, I just, it's, I'm blown away at the, at the amount of, of support you guys have shown my brother. So I just, um, all I can ask you guys to do is just to keep sharing you know, if you find another page, you know, a Save the Children's page or anywhere that you think people would help get his story out there, I, I just ask that you guys please continue to share and show love. Also, you guys follow me. I think most of you guys are all already followed, uh, but you guys can follow me. Um, if, so the comments, I'm getting tagged in comments. Um, and I don't know what they say because when I click on it, it takes me to a laundry list of hundreds and hundreds of comments and I can't find it. So if you guys need to ask me a question, just PM me on Facebook. Um, I, I check those. I've found, you know, a spam folder where they go and I found, you know, another folder where they go. And so I check those all the time. Um, Thank you guys. I know he's got tons of support. I'm like in awe. I can't believe there's 155 people watching right now. Like I was not expecting that. So um, I am. So we're planning on going live every Saturday at 1030 my time, which is central um, in the States. And I will continue to post the, um, the time converter. So you guys, basically what you do is you click on the link and then you put in Dallas, Texas, and then you change it to my time, whatever time I said I was going live, and then you put in your city, and it will tell you what time to tune in. Um, so, Alan, you have five kids. I know I have two little girls, um, and I just can't, I just can't even with what's going on right now. So, um, I'm, I'm thankful for people like him and actually he's not the only one there's tons and tons of other people out there who people who are in prison um, in fact I'm going to look I, I was going to look around my area and see if I can find anybody who's incarcerated around here um, for something similar that maybe I can go get um, an interview I know it's COVID so there's restrictions and everything I'm hoping they'll start letting visitors in the next month or two um, hopefully we'll see um, and maybe I can go get an interview with somebody somebody else too so um, let me see here let me look at our our signs really quick so I can total these up we have Um, we have 2,254 supporters on these petitions, which is freaking amazing because I'm pretty sure this one, one was only started, I think they both were started within the last two weeks. So that is insane, insane. Um, oh, and you guys, whoever's um, got on his Amazon book wish list, so he got a couple of the books today, and so he doesn't know who they came from because when you buy off of, you know, Amazon or wherever, it they open up the package. Even if you put, like, a little note to it, like, as a gift or anything, they they don't put, um, they don't give that to him. He literally only gets the book. Um, they all have to be paperback. Um, he does have five more books that he, two book titles that he wants me to add, so I will get those hopefully tomorrow and add them. And then also, when you guys write him, I need to get this message out to you guys. When you guys write him um, letters, you have to put a return address on there. He got three letters just today that were mail refusal forms. He had to fill out a mail refusal form, and he ha he's sending them to me because they didn't have a return address. I think some people don't really feel comfortable putting their address on there, but it has to, in order for it to get to, into his hands, it has to have one. Um, so they're going to send those letters to me, and then I am going to, if I can, I'll mail them to him, and if not, I'll read them to him. So um, just make sure if you guys are writing him, put, um, even if it's a P.O. box, I think you can do a P.O. box, but it has to have some sort of return address. Um, let me see here. 
I have not started looking for, yes, let's get more signatures. Yes, I am all for that. How long ago and where, hold on one second. Nolan, how long ago and where, what's, what's the question? Can you elaborate a little bit? Um, Michael, is it possible to appeal his sentence so it can be lowered? That's what we're working on. He actually he was working on an appeal. Um, his his lawyer that he had was working on an appeal, and it did not go through. Like they came back and basically ate ate the appeal alive and shot it down really hard. So they've tried that. I don't know when the next time he is up for an appeal and, and is available for an appeal, but I um, the whole reason we're doing the petitions is try is to try to get the attention of the people who can make a difference, right? To make a change. Um, so the so the verbiage that we're putting on these petitions is not just to free him, because we think it's going to be really hard for um, us to get the Supreme Court um, to actually just let him go, um, that overturn his conviction or overturn his sentence. What, what we're asking for, we're saying that just in case, but we're also saying, or to grant him discretionary parole, and we didn't specify when, because his discretionary parole hearing is um, in July of 2023, but if it's possible to get them to grant him discretionary parole now, that would be even better. So I didn't put like um, a date on there. Um, so I don't know, uh, Basically, the last, they're really, really hard on the parole hearings right now. Um, like the last round, they didn't grant one, one person parole. In fact, they said that, uh, that, you know, there's guys going up right now who have been in for 10 years, haven't gotten one write up, took every class, was perfect, you know, never failed a UA, nothing. And nope, just no explanation, just nope, sorry. You know, you've, you've been so perfect and done nothing wrong. And haven't haven't gotten any write-ups and followed all the rules and took all the classes, but no, we're not going to give you parole. So I don't know what's going on right now, but they're not having it up there. Um, so that's why I think the signing of the petitions is really important, and then also getting him the best parole attorney um, possible. So I haven't started shopping for them yet. Um, and my first place I'm going to look. I have my, my best friend Jessica. She's actually an attorney. She does family law, though, so she's not specialized in criminal or anything like that. But I am trying. I'm going to go look. Um, she gave me some websites, some bar websites and stuff that I'm going to go look uh, at and see if I can find somebody actually in Alaska so they don't have to travel. Uh, and I'm going to try to find um, the best person I can afford, basically. Um, when did he do this, Cindy? This was in 2016. And his last name is pronounced Vukovic. So, so, so like a summary would be in 2016, he went out, he got the three people on this registry. Um, the first guy he went in, he broke into the house and he slapped the guy around a little bit, stole some stuff and left. Um, the second guy, he broke into the house, punched the guy in the face a few times, stole some stuff and then left. Um, and then the third guy, he um, broke into the house and the guy, I guess, was starting to be combative and they got into a fist fight or a tussle and Jason reached up and grabbed the first thing that he saw, which happened to be a hammer on the um, countertop and hit the guy in the face with it and broke his optical bone. Hey, girls, can y'all be quiet? I'm live right now. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> My kids out there being silly. Um... Anyway, so, and that happened in 2016. They caught him, I think, the, that same day or the next day or something. Um, and he's been locked up ever since. So he has served four years of his 23-year sentence. Um, and Christy, Cindy Christy again, Vukovic. Are the people killed all known pedos? Yes, David. All three of those, um, two of them were convicted uh, convicted pedophiles and one was uh, convicted of child pornography. Um, he did not kill anybody. So if you see people saying he killed somebody, he, he didn't kill anybody. He just assaulted them. He's actually in for one count of assault 
one count of robbery and one count of burglary. Um, so I just, I just don't understand how he's in for 23 years for this. Like, people have committed murder, heinous murders who have gotten less. I just, mind blown, mind blown. Um, yes, no, he did not kill anybody. Um, Casey, bring him to Texas. I know. So if he ever gets out, I'm, I'm going to try to get it to where, because most of the time when um, a prisoner or an inmate gets out on parole, they have to stay in the state that they were, they served in. However, there are certain um, paperwork and things that you can fill out and apply for to get him transferred. But basically, we're going to be asking the state of Texas to take responsibility for watching over him, basically. So, um, um, the petition, Sam, um, if you look in the description of the live video, there's links in there. So there's a link to the PayPal money pool. Um, for his attorney fees and then you can also specify if you do donate money you can specify what you want it for some people want it to go to his books which I will pull and I'll send that to him um, um, some people want it to go to attorney fees or some people don't specify so um, I'm really just I'm mostly saving for attorney fees um, but if you specify where you want it to go um, that's that I, I'm fine with that also um, so you can he has a music player like an mp3 player in there and you can actually purchase music like um they're called media like it's like a little package deal and it gives him money to be able to buy songs or whatever and the songs in there are like ridiculously expensive they're like four dollars a piece or something um each little package is like 7.96 i think i don't know why they chose that amount but um, it's a little bit complicated because you have to go to this website, you have to create a profile, and then you have to, um, you know, choose your, add your inmate on there, and then you have to go search for the item, and then, anyways, it's complicated, so I plan on writing out the process if anybody's interested in that. He loves getting new music. The guy's got, like, a massive amount of music, and he can't, that and knowledge, like, reading, he loves all of that, so, um... Yeah, so Sam, so in, in the description of the live video right now, there's links to the PayPal, there's links to um, both petitions, which they will become one at some point, and I'll remove the link to the other one. I don't know if, or maybe there's going to be a brand new link for the two of them, I don't know. Um, there's, I think there's a link to my, my first um, Facebook post, there's a link to the Amazon um, book wish list which doesn't have anything on it right now. However, you guys can add books yourself um, and either leave them there for somebody else to buy, like something that you like that you want him to read or you think he would like, you can do that. Or you can add it on there and then buy it yourself um, and it'll go right to him. You won't have to add, add his name or his OB number or address or anything in there. Um, however, the book list, he is like, the prison people are gonna be like getting real. He's like, don't drink that. Sit down, goofball. Um, the prison people are going to be like getting real, real annoyed with all these books coming in. Um, so, anyways, I'm like, like whatever. If if they end up sending them back, or what, they don't actually send them back, I don't think to the address that they were sent to. But he has the option to send it to suit to me, and I can send it to him later. That kind of thing. So, um, and then magazine subscriptions; those are always welcome. Um, they always like things to read in there. Um, let me see. Thank you for the prayers, you guys. Thank you for all of, all of the support. You guys are amazing. Yeah, Mariah, or Maria, I know 23 years is ridiculously excessive, which is why we I'm trying to get all of this done so we can be like, you know, bring it to somebody who has, who can make the change and be like, what is this? Like, how did you guys let this happen? Um, let 
me see here. Um, is there a cash app or a Venmo to send help? Oh, okay, so so David, yes, um, I personally have a cash app and a Venmo. I have Zelle, I have all of that. Um, it, the reason why I haven't made a GoFundMe is because there's fine print somewhere on the GoFundMe about um, not being able to raise money for attorney fees or criminals or something along those lines. In fact, I tried to do a Facebook one and they denied it and I read the fine fine print and it had something to do with they don't condone criminal activity or something along those lines. So I think they denied it because of that. So that's why I created the PayPal money pool and not every, you have to have PayPal in order to donate to it, which kind of sucks. Um, so if you don't have PayPal, um, you can definitely, you know, add, P PM me, you guys PM me if you guys need anything or have any questions. Um, just send me a private message and I'll, I'll send you what I have, the information that I have if you need a cash app or anything like that. Um, and then um, I do, I was going to, I was talking to a friend the other day and she was suggesting that I, I do go ahead and make a GoFundMe, but it may just kind of be a general Jason fund to where it can go to, you know, whatever he needs so that the people who have GoFundMe or, or the people who, who don't have PayPal can donate that way. So. Um, so I, you know, just PM me for if they, if you guys need any of the links, like the links to the petitions, if you can't find them, just send me a private message on, on Facebook. Um, so I'm scrolling. Yes, the laws do protect the pervs more than the victims and the survivors. In fact, I can't believe that they are not doing more for the victims and the survivors than, than what they're what you know I just can't believe they're not doing more for them they're taking these people like my brother who have assaulted them or killed somebody who was raping somebody else and put them in prison for years and years um, but then they don't even turn around and help it the victims like are you like what I just don't I don't get it um so we can't send food in. In fact, you can't send anything into the prison except for letters um, and pictures. You can send up to 25 pictures in, in an envelope with your letter. Um, the, the ink needs to be plain, um, just plain ink. Don't be drawing pictures and getting all crazy because they, um, they people can, like I guess, put drugs in them somehow, um, drip acid. I don't know. Don't, so don't do any of that, but you can send letters, have to have a return address, pictures. You can send approved um, books or magazines from approved vendors such as Amazon.com, Barnes & Nobles, but it has to come directly, for, it, has to, it has to be sold and shipped from Amazon or sold and shipped from Barnes & Nobles. Otherwise, if it's a third party like selling on Amazon or you know Barnes & Nobles is outsourcing a book that you want on their website coming from a third party, they will not um, they will not let that in um, Sam he does, he loves lots of music he loves all the music it's so funny because uh, my favorite music is rap and hip-hop um, and he's always getting me all the good the good stuff from the inside that everybody's listening to and um, he'll, he's like you gotta look up this song you gotta look up this song and so I add it to my list and he's giving me some good stuff but he likes um, we'll let him answer that question when he that's a good question um, what kind of music does he like um, and if you guys have like a list of questions that you want me to ask him on the next live PM them to me so I'll have like them I'll put them all on a list and we'll kind of go through them um, Oh, thank you, my pits, yeah. Um, this is Journey. Hi, Journey. Can you say hi to the people? Journey. No, no? you're done? You're not gonna do it? Okay. Um, yeah, that's Journey. She's a troublemaker, very sweet, but a very big troublemaker, always trying to escape and run away. And then um, Lilu, they're both pit mixes. Um, Lilu is a sweetheart, but she's a skittish little weirdo. <laughs> um, Lindsay, I met my brother I met my brother in 2017, I think. Okay, so so let me, so there was, and I can't remember the years right now, but, so I found him in November of one year. I found him, 
and I was too nervous and scared. Uh, he hadn't been sentenced yet. I was too nervous and scared to even write him at this point. And when I found out everything, you know, I was heartbroken. Um, this is, this, yeah, that's the time. That's right. So that's the time that I cried for like three days. I cried all night and I ra actually wrecked my truck into my husband's car backing out because I was just like, um, and then a few months later, and I kept checking, and you know what? The reason why I didn't write him was because I didn't want to kind of mess with his head when he was getting ready for sentencing and all of that and, and court and everything. I didn't want to be a distraction. And so I kept checking the, his, um, it's like the law website or whatever where you can see what's going on with their cases. And I kept checking that, and I kept checking it. And it kept saying it was postponed or something like that. And then it was, I want to say it was March, February or March, a few months later, somebody had asked me something about him and I went to Google it and I had found out that he had been sentenced 23 years and I lost it. Like I lost it. And at that point, um, I actually uh, took and I, and I sat down and, I, and I, that's when I wrote him a letter. And it was like, I don't, I have it somewhere. He sent it to me because somebody wanted to do a documentary on, on him and our story and stuff like that and his story. And I had him send me that letter, but I can't find it now. But it was like pages long. I sent like a massive stack of pictures from when I was an infant to like current so he could see like me growing up. I sent my DNA, you know, my ancestry results where it shows that he and I have, well, he hasn't done ancestry, but it shows people that he like have the same last name on the on the landfair my dad's side um that you know we were both related to to kind of prove to him hey I'm, I'm your real sister um all of that so and then he got the letter and um called me immediately and I didn't answer the phone because it was an 888 number and I ended up I called back the 888 number because it called me twice and my, my husband was like well what if it's your what if it's your brother and so I called it back, and he, um, it says, that, well, I couldn't get through to him, obviously. He's the only one who can make out, outgoing calls. And he, uh, it said I, it was an inmate at, at Spring Creek, and I freaked out and threw the phone across the room and started bawling. And um, then he called me the next day, and I'll never forget the first thing, the first words that came out of his mouth. I, I picked up the phone, and I was like, hello? And he goes, he goes, you better answer me when your big brother calls you. And at that, when we just were basically best friends ever since. And he calls me every day. Um, we talk every single day. Um, sometimes he calls me in the middle of meetings and I have to decline it. And then he calls me back later and, you know, does that whole, why didn't you answer my call? So, um, um, Are the pedos he assaulted in a coma or paralyzed or something? Shelly Ann, no, that no, absolutely not. In fact, they're fine. They're like one guy, um, I think he said he lost his job. He was like, it may be in the hospital, the guy he hit in the head with the hammer. Um, but no, he, he's fine walking around, living his life. Um, Chris, yes, you can send books. I already um, addressed that. Sorry, I'm a little behind. Um, Western Union, oh yeah, that's that's true. Although Cash App and those the ones you download on your phone are a lot easier, so you don't have to actually drive over to the Walmart or wherever to pick it up. Um, yes, um, all three guys did combine, did serve less time than him. In fact, um, his his stepdad got um, a three-year suspended sentence and then I don't know all I know is that combined with that three-year sentence and then the other three guys sentences that he um, beat up was about nine or nine and a half years and Jason actually offered that to the courts and he said you know what he said you know what I'll do he said I will agree to serve every you know all, all of the time that these three pedos served and, and the three-year suspended sentence, you combine all of those, it's nine-something years, and I'll agree to that. And they laughed him out of the court. So, um, yeah. And then gave him a 23-year sentence. Um, let me see here. Um... 
Oh, thanks, Bill. Thank you. Uh, I try to be there for him. I try to do as much as I can. But I can't do a whole lot from the outside, so I'm I'm doing I'm doing my best. Um, Jordan, so yes, I have visited my brother three times. Um, they're not there. No visitation right now during COVID. Um, home invasion. Yeah, I don't know. I, it doesn't really matter. These people were pedophiles, though. No, he didn't get to beat the hell out of his stepfather. Um, he ran away at 16 and never went back. Uh, so, and then I think I think one of the things he had asked was that that his stepfather have to go and serve his three year sentence. Um, but unfortunately, he passed away. Unfortunately, he passed away. He passed away before they could, you know, even think about um, making him serve those three years. Um, thank you, guys. I just don't understand. Yes, there should be a mental plea. Yes, exactly right, Amelia or Emily. Uh, Amy, this happened um, in 2016. That is when when all of that stuff went down. When he when he went and beat up the pedophiles. Uh, the the and we talked about this earlier. But the fact that he got sentenced 23 years and all of that instead of them helping him, like help a man out, like obviously. He's traumatized because the justice system failed him when he was 13. Like, how are you going to convict his stepdad, but then turn around and let him go, not serve a single day in prison and go back and be his father again for three years until he ran away, he climbed out his window and ran away to get out of that house? Like, it just, it blows my mind. Um, yeah. How is your other brother doing with all of this? Lindsay, um, I don't know because uh, Jason, so he and Jason, Joel and Jason did not talk for 25 years. Um, and then out of nowhere, out of the blue, Joel shows up at his, at his sentencing hearing. Unannounced, had no idea. His attorney was just like, hey, your brother Joel's here? And he was like, oh, okay. So Joel had, um, he got up and he, he testified on his behalf, but things got a little weird. He, I don't know. He said some weird things up there. I'll let Jason tell you because I wasn't there. But it was on his behalf and he was confirming all of this stuff did happen. Um, and then they got to chat for about a, an hour or two, I think, afterwards. And then he left and Joel wrote him a letter and sent him some books, um, and he wanted him to convert to Baptist or something like that. And Jason wrote him back um, and said, "Brother, you know, can we just leave religion out of this? And um, and you just we just be brothers. Can we please just be brothers? Just be my brother." And he never wrote him back again, and he's never answered one of his phone calls. Um, he doesn't want anything to do with myself. I've had my baby. It's okay. Come here. Um, over here, um, uh, anything to do, he doesn't want anything to do with myself, um, from what I know, I, I, they have another brother, they have another brother, the, a half brother, uh, cause it was his mom and his dad's, his stepdad's, um, um, two kid, one of the two kids and I got in contact with him and he was able to reach out to Joel whenever I found them and they, uh, he said, you know, nope, I don't want any contact, so. Not, not really sure why. I know he's had a, had a rough, had it rough too. So, um, I don't know. I think he's just kind of traumatized about the whole thing. Maybe he thought I wanted money. Maybe he related me with, um, maybe he relates me with Gary. Doesn't want anything to do with Gary. I don't know. Um... Yeah, just PM me, guys, if you guys. 
um, have any questions that I haven't answered or if you've tagged me in something and asked me a question and I haven't seen it or responded the uh, like I said the not notifications are uncountable um, and hard to hi babe are you coming in here to sit down um, they're just they're really hard to keep track of and, and actually find what uh, you know what you actually said because there's hundreds and hundreds of comments and I can't find them so um, yeah so anyways say hi girls this hi. is this is Mia and this is Lelia say hi, hi. <laughs> we're doing homeschool how do you guys like homeschool pretty well yeah uh, I prefer regular school <laughs> I what about you? Don't I like love school. this. You I love homeschool? Like school. You're a goofball. <laughs> we got some doggos. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's not enough room in here for all y'all. Uh, it's okay. Got two dogs and two kids. Anyways, um, yeah. So, anyways, just you guys, you know, follow, friend request, message me, um, because we'll go live again on Saturday morning at 1030 Central. Um, so just, you can, and I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll post that. And I'll post the um, the time zone converter. Um, I appreciate everything, you guys. I, I can't I can't even imagine. Um, oh, and also, I'm going to a protest for Sophie on the 25th, I think. And I'm going to be speaking. Actually, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm going to be speaking at the protest too. Um, no, baby. This need to see You're tripping. Did it through. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I'm going to be speaking at that at that Squeeze. protest. Um, so I'll keep you both posted on how that goes, and I will will update you guys on my page um, every day on how how we are doing with the petitions and um, and the the attorney fees and all of that. I'm trying to keep everybody um, as updated as possible. So. Ha, Paul, yeah, yeah, they, they decided to come join the party. <laughs> Anyways, okay, well, um, I'm probably going to log off of here. Please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, tune in next time. Thank you, guys. And I hope everybody has a good night and or day. Because I know some of you guys are all over the world, in New Zealand, and Australia, and um, the UK, and Canada, uh, everywhere. Um, I, I'm, it's crazy. So, so okay, bye, guys. Say, say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>